Hi guys, welcome to Opposing Views. My name is MFA Akosia Aditi and here is MX24 Television. So the news is out there and uh, today we get to streamline and have our own very conversation. And again, it just might be opposing, but we just would have some good conversation. Welcome to the show. Now this, uh, this evening I'm joined by two of my very good friends. One who is not new to MX24 Television, a very good friend, Benjamin Amonkwa, you know quite vocal about his position and tells you exactly how he feels about it. And I'm also excited to have a debut on the show today, Angela Asantua Amwaku. Uh, she prefers to be called Ya Asantua. So it's going to be a good, a good conversation today, but let's see how we can situate some of the conversations. The big one that broke today is about number one, pleading not guilty to any of the 39 charges, not even a single one. Another update is the fact that he's been granted a 500 Ghana CDs bill. Um, I hope I'm correct to think. 500 million. Five, 500 million. Ghana million. Ghana yes. <laughs> yeah. 500 million Ghana CDs uh, bill on, uh, yeah, so that he can be coming to, uh, so, so, so we're told that the Attorney General is pushing for a day-to-day -day hearing. Let's see how uh, that goes. That's all the number one. We'll have a conversation on that one. And then we'll definitely talk about the big one that broke a bit later last week. I just have to apologize to uh, her party members and the leaders in her constituency. I'm not too sure if she sent an apology to the constituents herself, but we'll take a look at that video and the fact that if she decides to really want to run again, what would be her odds? What would be her chance? Like, have you also received any of the copy, uh, any of the yogurt that she's sharing yet? I mean, just by the way. But also, even though we have kicked against EC many times and a lot of times, are they making some positive strides? A lot of people have been registered so far. A lot. We'll share with you the figures and the numbers at some point. So here's the person views. And uh, Benjamin, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. As usual. <laughs> on Monday, I choked you. I kind of like <laughs> said, suppress, suppress your feelings and come and say that here. I'm fine. Very sure I'm going to see you for <laughs> sometimes holding my voice. You make me swallow a lot of the things I want to put across. <laughs> but as usual, since you are the host, I give you that privilege. Thank to you. Thank you. I'm show. immune to certain things. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you, you Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so I mean, the week, last week, and the week is still young anyway, mm -hmm. but which one of the news really, like, shocked you or which one of them didn't shock you or which one are you itching really to pounce on okay thank you very much for having me on your show um i won't go the news it's just a full split okay what got me thinking actually it's shocking it's surprising i mean it posed a lot of questions what actually triggered her to think that she's in the position to i mean apologize apologize or think of, of coming for um, coming this, I mean, the fourth round again, mm. but um, from my little study, this is her fourth time that she, she wants to come to Parliament to, to serve her constituents. So, okay. yes, her story is really shocking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, you know I'm kind. Some of you may have seen the video. Some of you may have not seen the apology. Let's take a look. We'll be back. so... <laughs> At the echo packets here, at the ma, the party for the new patriotic party, and the party paying for the decline man paying na na abe down kwe kufuado. Na be di che the vice president, the mami the chief of staff. Allah bo frema osay opari, majority leader, and the entire leadership of parliament. Mimi anom emrasche be drafo. Majority focus. Me percent me fa kwenye so e pamu ni na chow. E ne bi a e tre mu. E ne ye bi a e free me ho e ba ye. E sa me sira mo se e ne ni da mu e ne ne maji mo na na me si ni pi se sebi me de mo ni be tri tri form. E ne ama be bre na na e koso e wo ma bra pum e ne me busi mu. Me fa. The regional executive, Beta Accra, the constituency executives, our chairman, goes to Eda Anu, the headquarters of New Patriotic Party, the general secretary, any national chairman, any Wapam Funina, 
the Pamunina show supporters, sympathizers, a munina mundo party no a na mudomi, a wa bishi mute see a way in pesia ni muno. The pamunina show ni si be a mon family bonny and chemi. Seven penny four good baby says a wuba a jan and nine go on soa yin chanchene na sebe ye pepa. Ni abe be a nyanku kundi sre munina, me din de atua safu, na chebe dwenia ni tina ho edema or man fo a e wo dome kwa pinya. Nyanku pon shre munina. Ah, na de na muyesa, because this is who we are. Benjamin. Yes, and so this is who we are. We always would, would err on the side of culture and, you know, apologize. And so I personally am taking a stand. I'm the host and I'm not supposed to take a stand. But I seem to be coming along, coming along with Adressa for that. Her apology is just very well accepted. And I think that it's not strange. And it's actually very difficult to see somebody in political, you know, position adopting a cultural mean and a moral means to want to apologize. And, and so I find it very attractive. I find it very, like, uplifting. And I don't think there's a problem with it. And if she wants to run, I really would give her, her, would give her my full support. But just because it is a woman, I want to be biased. Yes, and so on. Okay. So, address her for as a woman. Um, based for per the video we just watched, there would have been nothing wrong if she was just a woman. Mm. But this person is a personality. She is a leader, a political figure. And then, you see, in our, in our current dispensation, where the quest for feminism and the women empowerment has become the song of the day, mm. I think we women, as in as much as we are fighting to bring women in power, we should also give the opposite gender, extra reason, aside the, you know, when there's gender balance, it makes decision making. What does this woman possess? I mean, you're a family woman. You are, she was much informed and much aware of the role she played domestically before she, uh, she said, see, I want to lead my people. I want to take the caretaker and extra. I want to be the mouthpiece of my constituent. So please, give me the mandate. In 2012, you were given a mandate. In 2016, you were given a mandate. In 2020, you were given a mandate. In fact, that's, that's 12 years of service. Mm -hmm. Ajwa Safo should understand that she is, no, she is not just any woman. She is a political figure. Hence, she should know better than what she did. And, 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 and even most surprisingly, she was then the uh, Minister for Women Gender, and Gender. Yeah. You see, the funniest thing is, she, when she, she did not just neglect her constituents, she neglected her, the, the country as a whole. I quite remember 2012, 20, 2021, 2022, sorry, 2021, 2022, where um, the cost of uh, sanitary pad became, I mean, started rising at an alarming rate where... Um, Gender uh, advocates were just yeah. shouting, yeah. What, what is the government doing? The government is the minister who has been placed in charge mm -hmm. to serve as a link between the people, that is women, and then the, 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 gov the, the government, who he, in this case is the president. Mm -hmm. So if coming out to just apologize, I believe we should just take the conversation beyond tradition and then tackle it as I say, she is, a, uh, she is a, a, a political figure. You have wronged the nation, step aside. Recently, I think this morning, I saw some um, video about a, a Somalian uh, mayor slapping a woman, and then immediately he was he was asked to resign. In fact, okay, that's, that's, he was expelled. That's that is pretty straightforward because that's a crime. You that, know, that's a crime. But I just have at the time that she was not available in the country, said that she had not neglected her work. Misconduct. Just, you see, social media has become another world. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say there is what most most people. What was the misconduct? Misconduct, negligence. She no, was, negligence. She neglected her yes. constituents. She neglected her role as one, um, the, 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 as the MP Partaking because she was yes, making in parliament. She wasn't active, and that alone, although a, a committee was set to in, make inquiry into the whole thing, but for where I stand, mm. it is misconduct. It is indiscipline, and that as a person, it's no different. Uh, it's not the, the situation is not different from what the gentleman in Somalia did. Mm. Once you have gone beyond, you, uh, you have you have set, uh, uh, gone beyond your boundary. Mm. See, step aside. 
women and the country deserves better. Okay, okay. I mean, to think that this is coming from a woman, I'm quite impressed as well. Uh, okay, Benjamin, so she thinks that the fact that she was not available is a, is a straight take, that you neglected, you neglected your responsibilities and so there's no need to even allow you. And she can even equate it to what happened to this, uh, was he a member of parliament? Or no, he was a ma mayor. Mayor, yeah. yeah. She can actually equate it to that. That I think is quite hard, but... Um, yeah, MFA, you see, yesterday I agreed with you when you made a point that um, this issue shouldn't even be a public issue in the first place. Mm. But for the fact that Ajoa Safo is uh, a leader and a member of parliament of, of one of the biggest constituencies mm -hmm. in Ghana for that matter, I think that the communist inferior tactics adopted by Ajoa Safo typifies the typical view or perception that the Ghanaian politicians have about the electorate. Okay. You see, at Joa Safo, I listened to the secretary, the current secretary of the constituency that she belongs to, and said that this is not the first time she has done this. Okay. Yes, it's a, it's a strategy she adopts. She will do the thing when it's time getting to election, she will come and apologize. Then they will accept it, and then she go in for election and she wins. And I'm telling you that it is not only at Joa Safo, that is how the typical Ghanaian politician views we, the electorate. But Ben, if this is not the first time and she comes back to contest and they vote for her to win, that's surprising. Exactly. That so is who the, is really failing? So the people or that, the leader? You see, I was, I, you see, it means that we have problem mm -hmm. with the way we assess the people that put themselves together. Mm -hmm. You see, today on social media, you, we are making fun of it that Ajua Safo is actually sharing your goal to people. Yes. I'm telling you, that is going to form the decision. It's going to inform the decision that people are going to make as to whether to vote for her or not. And you'll be surprised that majority who are going to vote for Ajua Safo are going to vote based on the fact that she has actually shared your goal to me and she's the one who carried the yoga to me. Don't, don't be surprised at all. And that is why our country is not moving forward. Because, you see, I also belong to the group of people who used to think that the problem with the Ghanaian politics is the leaders. No, the problem is our, with our society. Because what we have failed to understand is that the leaders are a representation of the society. Mm -hmm. And so if there is a failure of leadership, it means that there is a failure with the society. And so we need to start looking at the society. Mm -hmm. It is not the leaders. You know, when we say they are corrupt, the leaders are corrupt. Who corrupt the leaders? It is we, the citizens. If we say that the leaders are not competent, who elect these leaders, it means that our choice of leadership, the people that make decisions to choose the lead, various leaders that lead us, our choice is problematic. We need to look at the way. You see, the universal adult suffering, that the fact that you are 18 years old and, and you can speak, even, mm -hmm. not even speak English, you are 18. You are mm -hmm. an adult. Who says everybody who is 18 is of the same mind can take decision for himself How can or we herself? Test this? That is it. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that everybody who is 18 years old can make a decision in the interest of this country. That is why I want us to go back and look at this universal adult principle. Mm -hmm. We have to start looking at the qualification to participate in the electoral process in Ghana. Indeed, you should attain a certain level of thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. I, I cannot, I, my, uh, me alone cannot uh, be, I, I, can't, I can't, can't make myself like I know it all. Yeah. But I think it should be a discussion that should be open that we should attain a certain level of thinking to, to be able to qualify to participate in the electoral process. Now, I am a very active member of the NDC. I don't hide that. And in 2016... Yes, I do belong to any political party. Yes, I do. Yeah. Which one of it? The New Patriotic Party. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and in 2016, I actively participate in the electoral process. Indeed, when you go to the constituency level and people on the ground, you meet people, majority of them, who tells you that buy me at petition one thought and I'll vote for you. Wow. And I'm telling That's you. That's how much we sell out. Exactly. Vote. And I'm telling you, if you fail to buy that application for the person, you are in you trouble. Lose he will not vote for you. You can't allow such people. And I'm telling you, they are in the majority. Mm -hmm. 
They are in the majority. Mm -hmm. And you can't say that because the person is barely 18 years old, we should give that person the platform to. So I think we should be gravitating Let's towards. Let's stay on this, this matter. Yeah, let and me come back to Adwa Adwa Safo. Okay. The reason why I seem to deviate a little is that. I understand. And I like where you went. So yeah. we're going to explore that part exactly. of it. But you can go back to Adwa. But you see, Adwa Safo actually, as a person, doesn't make any. It doesn't, I don't even look at him. It's up to the electorate. That is why I'm deviating. Because, you see, the electorate who are at Domi Kwabinya, who are going to take the decision as to bring Adjoa Safu in or not, I think that they have a problem. And it's not about the Domi Kwabinya electorate alone. It is about electorates, people who participate in the electoral process in Ghana. Mm -hmm. If an MP who has been elected to represent you for some time leaves the country, and the only flimsy excuse he has, she has is that she has family issues. MFA, I'm sure that where you are, you have thousand and one family issues. Even my colleague, she has thousand. And, there is nobody here, even in Ghana, who can tell you that I don't have any family issue. Mm -hmm. And because I have a family issue, and so forgive me, it was not intentional. No, you are not elected to tell us. You knew the responsibilities of the position that you are going to before you accepted it. If you can't give way, there are 1,001 women in Ghana who want to occupy the Dwami Kwaminya seat. So I don't want to even focus on Adwa Safo and make it personal because if I want to make it personal, I will deal with her the way that she will, not, <laughs> she will, she will, she will never find uh, nice at all. Okay. But I think that is why I'm maintaining that it is... The, uh, the universal adult suffering thing, that, that is That must problem. be. Let's stay yes, on. we have to look at it. Yes, I'm sorry. So um, I like to think that it is because we want to select the best person. This is how we have a, uh, the election process where the delegates will select one and then now present it to the electorate for them to now vote for. I like to think that the electorate or the constituents, they do not vote for a person. They vote for a political party. This is my position. And so the real decision making is when they are voting at the delegate stage. So if the delegates, knowing how <laughs> elections during that stage is very hard, it's really not who has done well, but it is who can, the highest bidder. I mean, we're all in this country here. We've heard stories, we've seen it before. We'll not shy away from it. The fact that people have distributed bags of rice, like you said, people are even reducing it to an apathetic thoughts. And now looking at it, the, the, the ice cream is going to give a long-term default, you know, effect. So if the delegates vote for Adjoa Safo and you present her to me, okay, on December 7th, I won't have a choice. I'm definitely going to vote for, I won't, if I'm MPP, I won't vote for NDC. I vote for the MPP. So where is the real power? Even though we should look at whether a person at 18 is enough, whether or not it is enough for them to vote, who really carries the power? Okay, so... Um as my, my colleague right, uh, rightly said, it all rests in the bosom of the delegates, and whether we, we like it or not. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, even if after the primary stage, as to who becomes the next um, MP for Domi Kwabenyambi, rests with the delegate. Mm -hmm. But then, let's come back with the political party. I believe that, as we all sing this sense of patriotism, we as individuals, too, we should know better. If I know I have failed in my capacity as the as the MP. I just have for, I, I mean, I'm a woman, but then any woman can go contesting for her position. But before. she started from 2012. Why are we not, mark, why are we not marking her, her, you know, what she's done from 2012, 2016, and then 2020, and basing our decision just on this, 20, this, this, this time around? And if I say there's this idea that the end justifies the means. Okay. And, and a person's character is who uh, makes, makes, makes the person. For all we know, maybe she's been doing it, mm -hmm. but then it hasn't come to uh, public public uh, mm. notice. Okay. But then this time around, um, we have seen we, it. We've seen it, and okay. we are going to talk based on what we've seen. And besides, the fact that she has she she has been introduced to politics for all these years. I mean, even before that, she's uh, she's been appointed. Um, she's been a government appointee for over two, three years, even before she came in 2020, uh, 2012 to contest. So, I mean, she's not new to politics. Mm -hmm. So if there's any person who should know, she should be, she should know this better. Was she very should... well celebrated some years ago. She was sometime the youngest Ghanaian lawyer in this country. Right. For some so, time. She should, she should yeah. know better. You see, before I, before, before I land, poly, uh, leadership itself, leadership itself, is you, you need to leave an example, have, leave an exemplary life mm -hmm. for your followers to follow. So... Adjoa Safo, 
the long and short of it all, she should know better because she is a leader. And then as women, we should prove beyond reasonable doubt that we are capable of... Is that fair? Yes, that's fair. Benjamin, is that fair? That it's, because it's, you're it's, a woman, it's, 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 I will, I will you avoid in your <laughs> invitation to this gender debate because once I engage in it, you know, I told you I'm from a typical traditional background. Yes. And I believe in the typical every traditions, mm. which may not sit well with you ladies, with modern this try so it, I will try pre it and see. You see, so I because believe these are, these are modern. One of the challenges we are having in our society today mm -hmm. is the copycat approach, where we think that everything American or European uh, uh, is is the best. For example, if you watch the typical African tradition, it is that it is the role of the women to be in the kitchen. I'm not advocating that. That is not what I'm advocating. Mm -hmm. But you see, to a large extent, that bring some sort of orderliness because there is a hierarchy in the house. Mm -hmm. You understand? We know who is in charge in the house. Now we are all proving to be equal. And that kind of way children can even challenge their parents in court and say that you are not supposed to slap me. That is why a, a student in America can take gun and shoot thousand people. That's the challenge. They are. So when we are copying, we should remember that we are also copying the problems and they'll come. These are some of the problems. But I want to quickly come and touch on the Adjua Safu issue in a way. You ask what is really the challenge because of the delegates who are letting. Yeah. The challenge is the deliberate monetization of our politics by the two major political parties, NDC and NPP. See, let me tell you, in my constituency, a lot of people are interested in me standing. Look at As that. an MP. But I don't have Kobo. Let me put it on. <laughs> I don't have Kobo. I'm saying that I don't have Kobo to share money the way they share. Mm. And the political parties, if I stand as an independent con uh, candidate in the North Dine constituency right now, a lot of people will be interested in me. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, by the time I finish, even my own junior brother who follows me will move to the next uh, uh, party or next candidate because what they are ready to offer him is yes. I am not have head. the resources. Okay. So see, the NPP and NDC, they come and they speak loudly. I'm a member of the NDC, but we all speak nicely. Oh no, the monetization we should take it out. But in actual fact, they are the two major political parties responsible. They resource their their candidates, candidates who stand on their platform to the extent that if you an individual who is competent enough to represent your people stand, mm. Masa, they will make you a laughing stock before your people, and when you leave your village, you will never come again. Uh, so, um, I mean, not to cut you short, so this, this brings about the initial question that you, you asked, that who is actually the problem? Mm -hmm. Right from the, the primary stage, I believe that, let's put Adriana for, it could be any other woman. So they still go through vetting, do you not? You have to yes. be vetted before you even, yeah. They go through, um, but you know a, a political party like the MPP or the NDC, for the incumbent, it will be very, very difficult for the incumbent not to, to, vet, go, to, right, go, not to go through. Because what are you suggesting? Right, that, right. Okay. They, they, are, they, they are well abreast with all mm -hmm. the processes involved. Mm -hmm. And certainly they are going to go through. But then, what, what role does the delegates play? We, 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 the, the delegates have been given the opportunity to elect one person. Mm -hmm. Well, whoever you present as your, 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 your what's the name? Yeah. Um, your candidate, candidate yeah. for the, uh, the parliamentary election is who the, the masses goes with. Mm -hmm. So there, what do you do? You, are you going to cut Adjua Safo off or then the other person? Because they are all from the same political party. That is what my brother st uh, stated. Monetization. It comes to play. And I don't think, I don't know who her, her, her contenders are. Mm -hmm. But trust me, Adjua Safo has the money. Eh. And I, I but believe, have you seen the video that... of the yogurt? Let me, have you seen it? Child oh. money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a this, precursor this, to all the real dance that is coming. Oh, because they are 18, they are requests. Those, is it for the voter MFA. registration? I don't know the point where she was sharing. MFA, MFA, yeah. Politicians, yeah. if you really work with them, mm -hmm. eh? What she's doing. It's just a you, you are seeing it as a joke. You are making fun of it. But on a more serious note, yes, and so I'm asking again. This is just one out of the many times that she has been member of parliament. Are we being equitable in sharing of our opinion about her, especially in accountability? Say, 2012, she did nothing for Dodom Kobinga. 2016, she did nothing. And even now, until she uh, uh, went hibernated, is, is, is it that? What is it? Is it enough to really rule out Adjoa Safo entirely like that? Let's, let's be honest. Okay, so not necessarily. Mm. I mean, largely. She deserves all the critics that comes to her because, as I stated, they unjustified the means. But then, I mean, her, about 
10 years in office, we mm. can't say that she hasn't done anything. Mm -hmm. And if she has, it all lies with the delegate. But then, you see, at the latter part of 2022, Ghana was going through some serious economic challenge. Okay, and it matters. Right. Yeah. Moment where you, you need to explain to your your constituents that this is what we are going through. You need proper, they need proper representation because mm. as, I, as I then, year, the year of road, nothing is working. Um, well, the economy has become very difficult. There are no uh, employment, uh, well, the name on it. There are lots of unemployment rates here and there. And they represent your people, present their their case to parliament, and you are nowhere to be found. And the next minute, we see you on social media singing, singing, singing praises and then thanking God in 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 in, in American accent and all that. And then That's American accent, name is <laughs> And you know what? It's not annoying the NDP people. It's annoying the NDP people instead. Um, yeah. I see, whilst I agree uh, largely that Adjoa Safo has not been very um, good to his constituents, mm. we also need to understand this from another perspective. It also boils down to certain internal wrangling's in the NPP as a political party because proud to this Adjoasafo absenteeism from parliament. There were so many issues that went on in the interview. You remember he sacked, she sacked uh, someone, a uh, school feeding Ketra, and we oh, yes, 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 then yes, she was yes, called back. Yes. So there was an internal issue. Okay. We, may, we, may, we may be doing a lot of injustice to, to her, her if we don't look at the issue. She may not be able to come out with that, because mm -hmm. we are in a political space, especially when we are going to elections. But mm -hmm. I know, and most Ghanaians also understand that, if a minister who has somebody working under her mm -hmm. um, thinks that the person is not working well, and if she fires the person, and within this, she is being forced to recall the person, or her decision has been uh, overturned. Mm -hmm. You realize that that even culminated into a vote in parliament that MPP was looking for the person who supported the NDC people to win. Mm -hmm. I, I remember you, re, you remember those discussions. Yeah. So there were certain internal wranglings. But be it as it may, I'm saying that I am looking at a Safu from the uh, lenses of the constituents. Mm -hmm. If a group of people elected to represent them, despite the challenges you have as an individual, you your responsibility them. to the people is out of first and foremost. Okay. And you may not come to us giving individual excuses. For example, once MFR has said that, Ben, you are going to be on opposing you, and I say yes, I cannot come and say that my son was sick. So I could, it, it, it's, it's, to me, okay, it's a flimsy yeah, excuse. I should be able to handle it maturely mm -hmm. and at the same time appear on your program. That is what I think. So Ajua Safo has failed in that regard. And yes, but we should also be looking at how to the many deal, other factors. Exactly. How to, first of all, deal with the monetization of the, um, our politics so that independent candidates can just feel free, stand up, and go and stand. Perhaps we should look at the state sponsoring anybody and anyone mm. who is interested in any constituency for vying, so that we could give equal platform to people who are interested in the political administration of our country. Okay, okay. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll touch on the number one case, which I'm quite interested and curious about. But I, in, in closing remark on this topic, I'm saying that Better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. At least you know address her for. And you know when she will jump ship and when she will not jump ship. But the person that you're going to choose, do you know what? I, I, I disagree. I disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are talking about because... our taxes and we are talking about the, driving the economy forward and the, we, are, we are here brushing it with. But if another I mean, person that's coming, do you but, know what that But despite that, why see, don't we think see positive? the number of people in the Domi Kwabina okay, constituency. Right. You can't say that among all of them, Adra Staff will be the best. It's better we give the chances to almost even every one of them to stand in. I ask because opportunity. there's one thing that is constant the political systems and how it goes, that's constant. But the person that is coming, is a variable that can be changed. Exactly. So I just thought that once the system is constant, the monetization and how what you even have to go through to become a member of parliament is constant. It never, never changes. We've been calling and calling, but the person that is coming will now adopt and, and take the shape of what the political party suggests and put them in a position to take. That's what I'm just thinking, really. But yeah. you see, your personal disposition, for me, if I happen to stand on NDC ticket, they vote me anyway, I'll give them a tough time. Because there are some decisions I work out. See, in 2016, they will remove me and walk me out of the Eastern Regional Communication thing. Do you know why? I disagree with certain internal party decisions they took. And for about two years, I wasn't part. I said, you can go to hell. 
I will survive because I believe in the principles that I, I hold here. Hell and must be choked. Everybody yes, send exactly. everybody to yes. hell. Yes. So, so sometimes <laughs> we, we need to look at different individuals. Okay. When you come and the person who is standing there is really a good person, perhaps you will steer the boat in a different direction. Okay, guys, we'll go for a quick break. Listen, a 500 million Ghana series bail for Nanapia Mensa, whom you popularly know uh, known as Nam One. Are you a victim to the 650 Ghana CDs card that uh, he wanted us to purchase for some sort of verification? What do you feel like? Are you okay even with the 39 charges from the Attorney General? Are you okay with the day-to-day -day, you know, um, trial that the Attorney General is pushing for? Are you feeling some cushioning and some comfort from the government finally? Do you feel like a fight on your way is coming? Let's, let's see. Let's, let's have that conversation. We'll be back shortly. Guys, welcome back to Opposing Views. So usually when we are not on air, the conversations are even more fun than when we come on air. Because actually, yes, you just drew my attention to that. Like, imagine me sitting here. Who am I? Then I just have to serving me with Fan Yogo on a tree. That hello. Of course, I'll be tempted to go. <laughs> but anyway, guys, welcome back. So number one, number one, number one. Have you, did you follow the time that Men's Gold came? The time that people were really cashing in and out on that? Time, many times that people benefited and all of that. In the entirety of it, do you think that Nam One really uh, has done as good or bad? Okay, on the question of Nam One, I think Nam One is an abatros around the neck of government and um, the people who he has been able to swindle. Um, this one, I'm not going to blame government too much because I followed the conversation from the beginning. Mm -hmm. At an early stage, SEC on social media, I saw the letter on social media where sex start warning that now one has no business operation in terms of the area of business okay. he wants to go into, and that. Um, All right. So, we will come back to to you just a minute, uh, Bernard. But did you do you know anybody who invested in uh, Men's Gold? Yes, I have a friend. And when you said I have, I thought you were going to say I have invested. No, 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 no. I, I'll, I'll, I'll pass out here for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been whooping the cry right now, <laughs> looking at all the bruhaha and then the back and forth on this issue. Yes, personally, I haven't, but then I have a friend and then come, I have come into contact with mm. so, um, some individual and then watch some individuals give testimony of the situation, what they are going through after mm. this um, expose and all that. Okay. Yes, and then before then, how people were rushing into it and then how they were cashing out. I mean, it was, it was a good one. For them, for them. Say, yes. Uh, so before we even go to the technicalities as to whether or not it was licensed, it was being regulated, I mean, were people defrauded and all of that, on the face value of it, my question I'm asking everybody is, do we think that number one actually did as like a teeny tiny good at all as a country or everything he did, like, is so terrible? Like, not just so, because I believe if the process wasn't at the beginning, mm. interested people wouldn't have, I mean, invested their all in mm -hmm. it because listening mm -hmm. to some people's testimonies, uh, there's this woman who was like her husband who stays abroad sends mm. her money to construct their house and then to put up a house for them, mm -hmm. and then she ended up investing everything because I'm um, at the first quarter of it, she got quite a reasonable return, quite mm -hmm. reasonable return. So mm -hmm. for her, it was good until. Bank of Ghana stepped in, and then everything was like, okay. She's made a, she's made, okay. quote unquote, a wasted investment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, Benjamin, let's come back to you again. So you were saying, I, I was, ask, I was just asking, uh, uh, Yasan Twa, that is it that before we go into the technicalities, whether um, he's going to be found guilty or not, on the face of it, he didn't do anything good for people at all. But what good has Namwan done? But people, you listen to her. There was somebody who had the opportunity to invest money that she was supposed to use for construction. Invested and got a return on investment. Let me tell you, we have two types of brilliant people. Mm. We have brilliant people who use their brilliance for to change society. We have br other, another group of brilliant people 
who can create things like virus and, mm -hmm. and it will also destroy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Namwan is a very brilliant person. Mm -hmm. If you underrate the intelligence of Namwan, and I think that most of our state institutions have underrated his intelligence, that is why they have been struggling with him in the court for so many uh, years yeah. now. You see, the guy knows exactly, before he steps into Ghana and start whatever business you people call it, I didn't see it as a business. Being a marketer, I see it as a, a Ponzi scheme, a sort of pyramid. At what point did you see that it could be a Ponzi scheme? Now, a friend called me. You know, I'm actually a victim of this, Namwan, not directly. Oh. My stepmother, How? who has my younger siblings, my father passed on. As a firstborn, I need to process the Senate and other things. When I finished processing this money for my stepmother, my family advised him that he should give the money to me to hold in trust since I'm the first one. She didn't. She used the whole money and paid into Namwan's account. So I'm actually also a victim. I'm actually working on the Namwan issue. I've had so many lawyers petitioning and those things. It's there. See. And the money from him. And until she finished doing it and the money lock up, then she now informed me. So I'm actually a victim some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. But you see, a friend called me the first time I heard about Namwan. He said that, Ben, can you imagine if you just send 2,000? That's mm -hmm. what she, he told me. Mm -hmm. That if you send 2,000 within three months, I'm going to get something like 3,000. I tell you, no. There is no business in this world that you send a capital that can give you your capital and put another money on. Such a profit doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually a red flag. You should be very careful. It didn't yet. In actual fact, people build out of it. People make the, yes, sense. Yes. The, the first group of people, people who went, they actually, that was, you see, it's like you want to bait a chicken. Mm -hmm. You throw some corn and the chicken will come mm -hmm. before you catch it. That's what Naman did. What he actually did was to bait the people. Now you realize that you say you don't believe it. Then your friend said 5,000 and he's building this time and has built story building. So more people were coming. But at a point, as I said, it's a pyramid. So at a point, the whole structure will come crashing yeah. down. That was what happened. But as I was saying, Namwan is a very smart guy. Before he stepped into Ghana, he knew exactly. He knew the lacuna that exists in the various aspects of our law. And he failed and, it. Yeah, exactly. He took <laughs> advantage of them. Yeah. And when he took advantage of them, by the time our even our institutions, especially the financial regulatory institutions, realized what was happening, he was far, far ahead of them. And that is why, up to date, I'm telling you, they are struggling to find ways of really nailing him. Because the guy did his work very well. It's actually like he put a map on the ground. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. If they say this, this is what I'm going to do. This is not just any, a local boy. This is a, an, an, an international uh, person who knows who what he's into. Okay, yes. so Ia and Benjamin here. So today in court, uh, just a, a pass up. So founder of Men's Gold, Anapia Mensa, who is standing trial for allegedly using the company to default over 16,000 people at, of 1.6 million Ghana cities has denied that he circumvented the laws of Ghana in order to operate an illegal gold deposit taking business. Now here's what has my attention. Now his lawyer, Kwame Akufu, told the High Court today that his client did not circumvent the banking and specialized deposit taking institution, which is the uh, regulation that regulates the deposit taking institution like the banks, as alleged by the prosecution to enable him carry out the operations of men's gold. That's one. He also said that um, Mr. Kufu claimed that it was officials of Bank of Ghana, BOG, who advised his client, number one, to change a men's bank. If you remember, it used to be men's bank, that is M E N Z, then bank together, uh, f to, it was from the previous name of men's men's bank with a K instead of a C. So there were some changes of names and all of that. Now, his lawyer is alleging that it's the Bank of Ghana that advised him to. Indeed, meetings, and here's what I'm going to quote. Indeed, indeed uh, meetings with the BOG, it was the Bank of Ghana that recommended that third accused company, that's Brew Marketing Consult, be set up in order to ensure that the gold marketing business was kept distinct from the business of men's gold, counsel said in reporting to Graphic News. And I do, I do understand why the Bank of Ghana will say this, because you couldn't have used the bank or the men's gold, whatever institution is, to be taking deposits of gold. So you have to actually take that that out and institutionalize it. And that is what he was calling as Brew Marketing. But my concern here is that 
it almost looks as if it is by the direction of the uh, Bank, Bank of, of Ghana. Ghana that he didn't, you know, it wasn't a, he didn't legalize it or 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 it wasn't being regulated. And I don't understand because once you have set up brew marketing, there's another institution that has to regulize it. The MFA, the the, the issue with um, how the transition or how the name changes mm -hmm. for me. One aspect of it is the caliber of people that we employ in our state institutions. Because I know that most of the state institutions, the people we employ there, once you are ready to give them money, they will, can lead you to do anything even that the law does not prove it. But you see, ultimately, you, the person who goes there, you are responsible. You now say they advise you. Their advice is from paper. You went there. Yeah. So we are going to hold you now one responsible. Yeah, because we're if, just... if you come to me that you want to set a bank and I advise that, no, instead of a bank, do, do it this. like this. It, it, because you can't hold banks, that, that, you know. Many banks, do they take, do they take minerals? Of that, course. That has of to course. be regulated. It, it, you see, na, na, one's business was novel. That's one of Very the kinds novel. that we've seen in Ghana. It's, yes, please. And I mean, not to cut you short, but then if you read... Read the article be, uh, well then downward. It's equally stated that now the business actually was was registered under a commission. Yes, but then the, also looking at the charges leveled against Nam One, it said they are they are charging him for money laundering. Mm -hmm. But then he is a because those some of these test, uh, testimonies that we are we are sharing from people they are saying that they deposited their monies. So it's not like if you have gold, come and invest it. There was, a, there, was a subset, there was another subsidiary of, well, if it's a registered company, then it's safe to call it subsidiary. Mm -hmm. There was another one called Brew Marketing, which is collecting and selling and buying mm -hmm. the, the gold. gold. And then the men's bank is the one that you can put your money physically and then take money in return. Yes, it's, so it's, it's, a it is, it's a murky <laughs> situation. <laughs> However, the, uh, his lawyer was not ready to mention the names. But I know that when you're dealing with the Bank of Ghana, you don't deal with individuals. You deal with their rules. That's true. That, that is actually the point I was making. Yeah. That in Ghana, if you have money to throw around, you can basically become a president. You remember when Amwan made his first appearance on the Ghanaian state? Was he was driving in convoy like a president. I don't know whether you remember those yes. things. If you go back to the archives, you see stories of Nawan being driven as if he's a, a, he's a president of this country. I remember one video when he was he was coming from a private jet, the kind of the Adowa dance, and then the, exactly. the escort. A exactly. You see, Ghanaians... Oh, but Ghana, we celebrate what is good. If that was you see, good it is not... You see, for me, I don't celebrate appearance. That is why I even choose my friends nowadays. You don't just see people and just get to them. You interrogate. You try to find out more about them and see whether the opposer agrees with you. When I one brought this business, because the country is already, our people have no money, the country will, and the ordinary citizen is suffering. Our people are always ready to rush on anything that they hear money without really stopping for Me, for me, personally, I don't have the money. And so I, don't, I find it very investment in Ghana. Oh, I prefer the money sitting on my account and always checking on it and making sure that it's there. If it I don't. I, I really don't believe in most of if the. If it wasn't for the recent challenges with our, you know, uh, death exchange Change. and all of these things, would you still have that assertion? Even the, your treasury bill, the government himself is not even able to give. You see, I, I personally, I know that as a business-minded person, I know that investment is good. But when people promise things beyond a certain limit, it raises a red flag. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether because I've done a lot of marketing and I'm into business and that is where I got this instinct from. But you see, when Namwan came, the red flags were there. Most of the things that were, he was promising mm -hmm. were, were like, even though he was at the point he was giving the things out, it was you have to question yourself, where is this guy getting the money from? But well, at this juncture, it's a, a suspect. There's nothing to say. But then, please, sorry. But then I, I equally feel like government has, hasn't done, done, government as in Bank of Ghana hasn't done the people any good. Because... The way she notices. We, that was be, later on. Because I believe that as, as, as a financial institution in charge of our finances, and then you are there to ensure that all these, some of these um, financial illegalities concerning and individuals, finances, and everything are protected. You, the Bank of Ghana. And right from day one, Bank of Ghana cannot tell us that the establishment of men's good hasn't come to their notice. But yeah, I think that that is a two-edged sword. Because 
in one vein, as an individual who is going into an investment, the onus lies on you to make sure that wherever you are investing your money, your money will be safe. I'm not disputing that. Yeah, I'm the, not the, disputing the second, that. that's why I said it's a two edges. So let me come my second point, mm. then you can come in. The second point is that as a regulatory agency, government also owes it to the people to make sure that people who come forward to establish businesses are actually people who are genuine in their business certified. And that yeah. is why I'm saying that I have seen on several occasions and people even attack some of the regulatory institutions in this country mm -hmm. with demonstrations against Bank of Ghana and other. Uh, other financial institution, when the uh, the institution started giving money, especially SEC, SEC, yes, uh, for yes, example, yes. SEC example, they for were example, very concerned yeah, about bond consistent, marketing. Yeah, consistent. They were giving money, and people stood against. It. I remember that people say they were even going to demo saying that the money does not belong to them, and that is their own money. And if uh, now one want to take it, but, what, what but is then, their concern? Then, so think, that is why I said it's a two-edged sword. Right. I still think leadership. Um, comes to play. And you see, sometimes what a leader says certain, certain, his, uh, their subjects do not see, just like they attack. But then, if they were in the shoes of Bank of Ghana, I believe they would have understood them at that point. And that is where Bank of Ghana comes to play. They take this, some decisions that that are beyond the, 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 the understanding of their constituent. That is, we, we, the ordinary citizens. So yes, I still stand by what I said, that Bank of Ghana should have acted swiftly and faster before we, uh, if they, um, before, before, before even the whole operationalization even commenced. It is, it, I, I see why it would have been difficult for the Bank of Ghana because it was quite a novel area. And even for regulators, they didn't know where to put the operations of men's gold, men's bank, blue marketing for them to regulate it. Because in this country, there are regulations that must regulate things that exist. Otherwise, what we are asking for is a Bank of Ghana had to create another novel set of rules to now come and regulate him. So what he was doing was very novel, because for you to now regulate the thing, it must sit under a certain remit. And so I see, I doubt that the Bank of Ghana, in as much as I don't agree with a lot of things they are doing currently, I doubt that they really overlooked or there were people that were inside there, as we're about to see in this development, that were guiding him in ways in which they can, you know, maneuver, mm -hmm. where the women's gold can maneuver their way and still exist, and which I will make it difficult. And you make a very important point. If there are people in there yeah. who actually aided him, yes. then we also need to focus or throw the light on those people and bring them out. But in the light of law, it will not hold. If you're, holding, if you're doing something that is illegal, it's illegal. what shocked me was a 650 Ghana cities card that he came up with quite recently. You, you know, that, that's because of impunity. The impunity and, and see, of see, he, 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 he thinks that he has outwitted the system. So and much. To come out again. Mm -hmm. You see, I, 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 I don't know, mm -hmm. but I tell you that this guy, he He's really has, he is courageous. You, you are in all this mess, you are able to come out to tell people that they should come and pay 650. I think that was what actually so annoyed there. A third the... party called Payboy, and Payboy <laughs> came up some years ago, and people suspected that it was for him, and he denied that. He didn't know them from anywhere. He had no business with them. Like, he had not seen Payboy as a, as a company before. But Payboy eventually showed up in the communique that came out from Men's, Men's Gold, Men's Bank. <laughs> that you have to pay, you have to buy a card of 60, 650 Ghana CDs for some sort of verification. And if you do not verify, you will take it as though you didn't do your due diligence. So when it is time for payment, you will not be paid. Is but, I mean, eventually when Ghanaians call them out, they actually... MFA, I think this, this gentleman, he's done his studies. In fact, he studied Ghana. He studied our system. And then, in fact, he was, he's been prepared for it since... So, as a criminal, he should be treated as such. We we'll see, we'll see how but the law. But then, will do I wouldn't, it. I wouldn't want to label him as. A, but he is a criminal. But then, it's let not me yet let a me yes, yes, so yeah, well, let's for be the, a little let cautious. Me, let me use this for the lack of better words. Uh -huh. Yes, he is a criminal and she should, should be treated as such. I mean, I learned the six hundred and fifty. Later on, he released another communique that he was cutting he was off cutting, the payments. Yeah. So how do you uh, refund? How do you refund the six hundred and fifty? The six hundred to started. those who has already made and to the, the same payments. institutions. You said you know what he's looking for money now. Because he knows that eventually the courts are going to nail him down. So and he's now, looking for money to maybe sort of try to pay the people. 1.68 billion Ghana cities. I mean, if, 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 if you say you've done nothing wrong and then you, it, it, you were operating as a banking system or as an investment bank, then you should have these people's monies in, 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 intact. Oh, well, sometimes business can go sour and then... 
uh, some investment, you took it and you went to do investment somewhere and all of that. I mean, so many things can account to the fact that the money is not sitting there. But one thing that I like about him was one time he tweeted and said that, um, a lot of people saying that, I'm not quoting, but the import of what he said is that a lot of people out there saying that Namwan owes me, Namwan owes me. Most of these people saying that Namwan owes me, they don't even know me. They didn't even pay money to me directly. They paid it to Men's, men's Gold. Look at the sort of as, it. As a company. Which on the face of it is true. Because but, but Men's Gold is a know, separate you know legal institution. There, there is some time that we have to take the corporate veil off and deal with the individuals. I think who whoever was veil. schooling him did not school him on that side of the law. <laughs> I think. All, all saving the banks. We don't need myself. I don't even know the, the, the owner of Fidelity Bank. I don't even know. Or the, yeah, that, I go yeah, the, the law seeks yeah. to protect right. them. But and if then, the law finds out that they intentionally were using that means of banking or means of institution that they've set up to defraud you, they would definitely pierce the veil or lift the veil, the corporate veil, and see who is behind and invest. And I see that's what the Attorney General yeah. is doing now. But he Let's, has no right to even make make such such a comment. In fact, he should be apologizing. No, he has a right because the like, men's good if you registered it as a company. It is a separate legal <laughs> entity. <laughs> and you see what 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 kills me is the bill that he was um, he was he was given today, five hundred million. See, the guy should be put in prison for a, a, a sizable number without of, any trial. Uh, uh, yeah, no, but no, that, that, that's he, a legal he, he was, process. He was, um, it's a, although we, I'm not trying to conclude uh, an ongoing or the name an investigation, best yeah. put, but then. Just like he's, you he's, and he's I, not, if we he won't go anywhere if because we, they've ordered him to. They've taken his passport, passport so. very much away. If you and I had done the same thing, trust me, you, you wouldn't even. You wouldn't even want to imagine where you would be by now. You, you've heard the comment, equality exists among equals, eh? <laughs> uh, so you and now our level will be different from Namwa and the others level. Right, people anyway, will still go to like, oh, yeah. what have you, and then they have been put, they have been detained for so many years before even their, their, their cases are called. Is it different from this person when he has run away with about 1.68 billion Ghana cities of people's money? And look at, people are stranded, others are dying because of some investment. But if he goes that to jail, will you get the money back? That's just for food. Just but just but I think the right. import of all our discussion is that I think the state institutions, Bank of Ghana, SEC, and the others, you use this as a means of tightening some of the rules Which and I... the registration processes for mm -hmm. businesses and things. I think that is a main thing for me, so that in the future... There's some good we'll, sanitization of it. can I sanitize the system. Yeah, I think that it. they have done... Nowadays, it's a little bit... Um, it's difficult, mm -hmm. but I think they should continue. Ghana, one thing is that it happens, then once a week or two, we've forgotten, we then a double of it happens again. That Sadly, is we it. have just about three minutes. I know that you were not very excited about the uh, registration process because you believe that it would disenfranchise a lot of people. Yeah. Why? Because of proximity. But we have made some good numbers. Um, Large number of you MFR, know, uh, people uh, have you, been registered. You, you, you know my position on the Electoral Commission and uh, especially the Commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, I think that whilst many people have registered, as, as indicated by the result, I listened to a press conference yesterday, I think that much more people will have registered if we have decentralized the registration exercise. I don't really know the objective. I listened to her yesterday, but I still am struggling to get the import of actually centralizing the process at the district offices. Be it as it may, one thing that I find comforting is the fact that she said that in 2024 it will be decentralized. I think I heard her say in, that okay. yesterday. Okay, so we look forward to that. Yeah, we'll but you are quickly on a straight. Why do you think the MPP did not go to court as the NDC and the other four parties? that wanted to seek an injunction. Why didn't you give me that question? <laughs> because because, because okay. she's, 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 yeah. she's a member of the MPP. Yeah. I mean, she's not, been, she's not been paid or anything to speak for them. Oh, yeah. But I like to, I'm trying to get into your, your minds. Why do you think, you don't think, that, do, you, do you think the process is fair? Um, let's give the EC the benefits of the doubt that they will deliver excellent. Although I'm not disputing that uh, we are not having any challenges because the constituency like the Madina constituency, I mean, they, some, they anticipated of, on registering about 9,000 people, but then first day, second day of to regi in, in registration, they had some kind of delay and then they, mm. the anticipated number of um, voters they wanted to register in a day was, was shortened or reduced, best put. But then, the MPP is the government. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, you, you and I do not expect a government to oppose its own, its own, 
its own. The, the EC is, a, is an independent oh, although he's institution. Although an she, um, she is an independent institution, mm. but then she is she is operating in a time of an, an administration. So even if the MPP is like, excited about the fact that the process is not no, being I, I, I disagree with you completely. Mm. In actual fact, the MPP as a political party is a distinct organization from the Electoral Commission. Mm. MPP can disagree with Electoral Commission, and in actual fact, MPP can even take Electoral Commission to court. Even the government can even take Electoral Commission to court because under the structure uh, that we operate, Electoral Commission is an independent state institution. So just like the way NDC and other political parties have taken the Electoral Commission to court, if not for hypocrisy, mm. if not for the fact that the Jemensa led Electoral Commission has over the years be in be, be, be in the cahoots with the MPP government. It would have been very good if MPP had joined the other political party. Because in, in principle, you see, you see, most you of see, the MPP you, you know, communicators that are, no, are, 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 no, no, are listening no. to... Let me give you the last second. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I disagree. If a political party is quiet on, on an issue, it means that they're in agreement. And even the reason why you are saying the the, the other political parties are saying, see, it will limit um, what the name, mm. um, it will limit mass registration. And then if it's the, the process is decentralized, it's going to allow m more, more people, people on the register. On the regis yeah. register. Then the EC is telling you that both method would... will still achieve the same purpose. Why don't we give them the benefits of the doubt? So the MPPs are saying that, right, we agree with the EC, we find no fault with the decision made by the EC. And then at the end of the day, if we are expecting, the EC is anticipating that at the end of the registration, there'll be 3,000 people, uh, 3,000 people. If we all are anticipating, Spacing. there'll be 3,000. And his issues, and the EC is using this process. Let's see if it will achieve that 3,000 mm. before we now come and say that you Ex didn't decentral. That's what she basically she said. Exactly. But, but I know. Exactly. I know. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But this is happening. So let's do the assessment. Let's do But you see, uh, an institution like mm. the Electoral Commission mm. must be like Caesar's wife and be above reproach. You know, um, we do not expect the stakeholders in the electoral process to be having problems with the Electoral Commission because, in the end, the Electoral Commission is the arbiter or the referee, and it should have its hands clean so that when you say that this person has won elections, nobody you, you will have, You have, you have, no. Yeah. All right, I guess on that note, all of us agree with this point that you have just made. Yeah, so, so thank you so much. Ah, thank Benjamin, my good friend, thank you so much. Guys, opposing views, see you next week. Stay well.